Hello, Ellie. How are you? Are we recording or not? We are now. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the Two Minute Terminator, the show that brings you the Terminator films that we break down two minutes at a time. Uh, across the way in scummy Birmingham, or should I say black country, is the wonderful and balding Ethan McKinley. Hi, everybody. The light is and bouncing just so off my, my name waxy forehead. It's Ellie Fitzgerald, and I'm coming all the way from Surrey. Lovely. Hey. Uh, when do you say the Black Country uh, International listeners or people of a slightly different hue from white? Uh, the Black Country, of course, is not... Well, the black people live in it, of course, but uh, the moniker was given to the area in which I live in uh, when I record this show for you uh, because it was the seat and the heart of the Industrial Revolution. Oh, uh, yeah. Of course, we have Iron Bridge uh, quite close by and not two miles from this house where I record, uh, studio I mean, let's make it sound fancy, uh, they actually created the chain for the Titanic, among uh, other things. So uh, yes, it's uh, quite a famous place. All the kind of iron and steel, I believe, that uh, went around the world, uh, internationalists. So she may be sitting near something with a piece of uh, black country, industrial revolution, iron or steel that was processed and manufactured here for you. Who knows? Uh, what we do know is we break down the Terminator films two minutes at a time as Ellie brilliantly opened the show there. Well done, Ellie. You kind of uh, hit all the all the beats. Thanks. <laughs> and you gave uh, me my day in the sun as well, which is something I don't do when I'm in charge of the show. Uh, it's uh, episode 45. We're going from minutes 90 to 92. And, uh, hit the music! <laughs> yeah, I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six-pack. <laughs> Howdy, stranger. Don't say howdy, stranger, to me. Load up. You didn't do the fourth. Thank God. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> Uh, yes, we're back. Uh, we're going from minutes 90 to 92. As I said, it is the two-minute Terminator, and we are on season five, Terminator Genesis. Uh, oh. Ellie, it opens yes. with... Um, you haven't watched it, have you? It does. It basically opens with John Connor, who just got punched in the face with a magnet, uh, falling in slow motion away from the camera. But he grabs onto the base or the back two seats of the school bus. And it ends with uh, J.K. Simmons uh, playing that crazy cop slash detective now that they met earlier. But it actually looked nothing like him at the start of the movie. Uh, he goes, OK, if you. And then he's abruptly cut off. Uh, so you'll have to wait till tomorrow to find out what he says. Or just watch Ooh, the movie. Oh, cliffhangers. We detective do Detective O'Brien, I apologize. J.K. Simmons plays Detective O'Brien. O'Brien. Uh, so yes. yeah, how have you been, Ali? You've had a nice uh, Christmas uh, evening after you kindly agreed to come on the show on Christmas Day. Um, I did indeed have a nice Christmas evening. Um, it was very enjoyable. Uh, Christmas Day was lovely. I would actually say that my bo uh, my uh, Christmas Eve was the best, um, but I generally find that anyway. But how how was yours, Ethan? It's all about the anticipation, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then it's just a huge anticlimax. <laughs> <laughs> like sex or podcasting with Ethan. Uh, anyway, uh, as I was editing the show, we should, of course, pay tribute to the uh, the late, great George Michael, who apparently died uh, suddenly. Apparently. apparently. Well, I don't know. Uh, George Michael has, in fact, shuffled loose his mortal coil uh, on Christmas Day, no less. So that was one present we didn't get. Uh, yeah, very strange. And I, I looked at all the news reports, and it says, every time it says died peacefully in his sleep, I'm not sure what the papers mean by this is there some kind of secret code but they've put mm. commas around that kind of like uh, statement yeah i know i completely agree plus it all just sounds a bit weird he's only 56 what how do you die 53. peacefully 53 how do you die peacefully in your sleep at 53 do you think he was on a bit of a uh, uh a, on a roll at christmas and then maybe happened? or something dodge i don't know you well, never I, know i just saw a news report from 2011 where he nearly died of some form of pneumonia and he had to have a tracheotomy what? I know. So the troubled star, uh, Jesus. Had a, obviously his, his life later life was peppered uh, by incidents like this. But yeah, he's mysteriously died. But yeah, I do question 
any oh, sleep. Oh lordy. That's yeah, that is a bit weird. And they have put it in commas, so does the paper think that's bullshit as well? I'm not sure. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. But we salute you, George. Freedom 90 and uh, Faith, that amazing leather jacket. And I think probably where I got my uh, idea for Jeffrey West boots from, I think, Kelly. I gotta have the fit, the fit, the baby. Yeah, there's that. Freedom 90, and then there's another one. Oh, yeah. Fucking hell, what's it called? The, one with all the, the other one with all the supermodels in. I like that one as well. Too funky. There you go. Boom. The Holy oh, okay. Trinity. I was never a big George Michael fan, but, you know, it's sad that he's dead. Fast anyway. Love. What? Fast Love. Fast Love. I don't know the words, but that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stop talking for you, Bissonette. That's the name of George Michael. I apologise. Oh, George, God. we salute you. Uh, rest anyway, in peace. Anyway, uh, back to the show. Um, I have some notes. Uh, my first note is that, you know, when John gets punched in the face yeah. and we see all that damage um happen to his uh, cheeks um would that would that regenerate or because it's been hit with the metal does that mean that that's damaged for good now no i think it either pulls parts of him away or they kind of recoil if you put almost like if you put salt near a slug and it would go and like i guess recede and shrink away from i guess the flame if you will the, the fire the, the heat I'm assuming it's that. So he gets hit in the face and he either kind of like, yeah. The, oh God, is it the nanobots? They would like move away from uh, the disruption or obviously get pulled away and there's little nanobots flying through the air as we like microscopic. But it's enough to knock him down and he actually falls yeah. almost to his uh, robotic death. <laughs> he was almost terminated. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a strange scene. But, uh, is it is it a straight? You've just got nothing to say about it, have you? No, uh, get, I don't know why either. Because something a lot. Quite, well, this is why I'm saying this because a lot does happen in this scene. There's quite a lot I've made notes on in terms of uh, the things that happen, but I'm kind of drawing a blank with what I can actually say. I've well, got things Ethan, written down. I'm so glad that you're going to bring so much to this show. Well, I'm recovering from yesterday. I was up like till four a.m. like editing and putting this shit There's out. There's always so. an excuse, Ethan. Come on. Well, you know what? Usually when you're in a job and there's some kind of disciplinary meeting or the, you know, someone's in trouble and they go, I'm not going to make excuses. Then they go, but. <laughs> That's exactly what Ethan does. Um, so I'm not going to make excuses, Ellie, but I'm just, uh, I'm just having a bit, I think my brain's a bit fried. That's all. But why is your brain fried, darling? Because I'm old. You're but not, not obsolete. Old. Hey! <laughs> what a wonderful kind of day. Hey! hey. Um... Yes, my next note was we see the classic hand grabbing uh, shot, which we've seen in probably a few Terminator films now. Although it traditionally made, made me think of the scene out of True Lies at the very end when the bridge is out. And he's hanging on to Jamie Lee Curtis. And, and, and he goes, Come on, baby. And we get the the hand grab. It's more, almost like the wrist slash forearm, isn't it? Well, we can start with this. Do you know why those two scenes are actually quite different, despite you noticing they are very similar? Why? Because this it's a one saving a man. No, I mean we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> I've actually got that in my notes. No, this of course is even though it's twenty three, twenty two years later. Mm -hmm. uh, True Lies is nineteen ninety four, of course. James Cameron's kind of remake of that French film, which he kind of did as a studio for hire job. Why I don't know. I think Arnie just wanted to make it, and he just went, "Okay, I'll do it, Arnold." Uh, the, this one is done on like a green or a blue screen, so they're not actually there, they're in a bloody studio. Whereas Jamie Lee Curtis, bless her, bravely was harnessed in and the cable went up her wrist and then was harnessed onto Arnold. So she was actually hanging live Ooh. out the bottom of whatever vehicle, I guess it was a helicopter. Good lord. Yeah, so she was on, standing with her feet on top of the, I think, the limo, and then it goes off and it's just her dangling going, oh my god, that's <laughs> all completely real. <laughs> I see. Yeah, so, um, uh, I mean, not, like, <laughs> not that this looks like it's like blue screen, I guess, but uh, I think there's an extra drama and a reality to the true lies, of course, because it's the amazing James Cameron, who we love. Even uh, James Cameron. Whereas this, not. Uh, so, yeah, no, sorry, what were you going to say, Leo? I apologise. We're quite, sed I'm quite sedate today. I'm, uh, I don't like being sedate. <laughs> wouldn't, have, um, wouldn't have Sarah's arm just been ripped out of it, ripped out of its socket when she uh -huh. grabbed with, um, <laughs> Kyle and the whole bus falls and obviously Arnold's holding on to her but she's a tiny little girl with absolutely no muscle whatsoever and Joy is how big? Yeah. Well, he's and she just she four. just she just you know holds on to him and she's fine. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because in my notes, Ellie, I've got in cock ups. Cock up. 
Uh, it seems highly unlikely that a character of such light and small stature as Sarah uh, would be able to hold both the majority of her own weight and that of Kyle on the bridge scene without suffering serious injury or dislocation to her shoulder. <laughs> Oh, nice. So yeah, you've uh, you've got it spot on there, really. Yay! I'm so glad. Um, I've just seen a bit of a horrific picture. And oh, and by the way, Ethan, all the TG tickets are sold out. I imagine they would be. Um, That's why I asked you to get them a month ago. I know you can flip this and go, well, why don't you get them, Ethan? And I'm like, you're absolutely right. I should have got them. You I never apologize. get them. Um, Having said that, but there's always a way. So... I know. So if you see of any, you need to holler. Um, yes, so... I thought that that was absolutely ridiculous. She's a tiny little woman. There's no way that she would have been able to have hold up um, Kyle like that. She would have dislocated her shoulder or the whole thing would have just ripped out. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Kyle would have just gone plummeting to his death. Um, my next point. So, By the way, you're, you're John... picking up radio syntax off me, by the way. I know. I'm trying to be more and professional. And he would have fallen to his death. In fact, now you're turning into Oliver Harper. <laughs> Yeah, but at least that's funny. By the way, Oliver um, Harper's retrospective listeners, I'll uh, link it under this show. He just did a really great one which, on Masters which, of the which, Universe, nineteen eighty seven. No one will watch. Forty five um, minutes of pure joy. I'll link it under the a, show. No one gives a fuck, mate. Um, so, yeah, when, John, <laughs> when John's about to fall down the bus, um, can he shape shift at all? Because why not just kind of shoot your arms out so that they become like long plinths and just kind of hoist yourself to the to the actual bus and then you know um the way that the alien kind of like runs up the uh lift the the uh, the ventilation shafts yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. do you know no how they did that, that? i have as no idea we note. can't discuss that in this particular we can it's james cameron it's okay just as a little oh, okay. sidebar uh the reason they have that kind of weird run as they're coming down the corridors they set the camera up at the base of the air shaft with it facing down and then they lowered a dancer who had a harness around his waist on a bungee cord and they just dropped him and he just scrabbled forwards to the camera but it looks like they're kind of like lightly just kind of running towards you on like a ground level so that's how they yeah. did that Ooh, Ethan he's got all the facts in front now in answer to your question of how John moves around I don't know I'm, I imagine he could shape shift because you could essentially he's a T3000 so I'm assuming that means mimicry and he's like on a mm. cellular level so technically maybe even better than T1000 even though the T1000 is a cellular level kind of like machine isn't it I don't know uh, so how come he doesn't use that to his advantage in this situation instead of plummeting I, I don't know I mean as we see later in the film jumping ahead he kind of like phases through Arnold doesn't he, he kind of turns to mist yeah. and then just pummels through him like a hammer and also when he's like ghosting away from the MRI machine the thing that we saw like about 10 episodes back uh, he was kind of doing it then but obviously he didn't have control of that he was trying to walk out of his own kind of like uh, incarceration if you will as the magnet pulled him back whereas when he fights Arnold later in the film spoilers he's kind of like doing the same thing but like punching through him so why he can't kind of just turn into like a cloud of flies essentially or mini machines mm. and just like fly out of the situation I have no idea or like fly in Sarah Connor's ear and just like go right destroy this brain <laughs> 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 so I don't know it's a great question Lee. I'm uh, I'm as uh, I'm more shocked at the the stupidity of this clip than the sad passing of uh, pop legend George Michael I know what the F um, the other thing I thought was a bit silly about this scene is as uh, Kyle is being hoisted out of the bus, the moving bus, he suddenly manages to have time to grab his backpack. Again, not something that I think would actually happen in this particular scenario. I, that would have just fallen straight away. Well, I think as a soldier, and touch would I never do this, but the amount of people I see that lose phones or drop them or spill a drink on their phone, my phone is constantly on my person, along with my bag, which I travel, you know, around with all the time to these various jobs that I do. I sound like a hitman now. But like there's never a time when like that bag will be out of my sight or to hand run thinking about it and stuff or even my phone so i think he was a soldier who's in the field and you were kind of your life up to a certain point had literally boiled down to the bare basics of necessity i think you'd have so much value in, in your mission and the things you'd have to need on your personal to kind of get through whatever situation you're in i think he probably would grab the bag i'll let him off on that one i'll let him off i i have I don't. I'll say one um, thing, Ellie. Uh, 
Have you made and any also, notes on the helicopter? And also, he swings, he swings the bag up whilst he's still being held. He swings it above his head so that it lands on the on the bridge. Again, there's no way he would have been able to have done that. The additional weight that that would have put onto Sarah's arm. Yeah. Well, okay, when Kim Basinger falls off the top of the cathedral in Batman, the 1989 Tim Burton version, Michael Keaton grabs her with one arm as he's hanging off the ledge of the thing, swings around and swings her up so her hands like clip onto the side of the uh was it the the footing if you will of the bottom of the cathedral complete ridiculous bullshit but he pulls yeah. it off bullshit bullshit bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> have you mentioned the helicopter really i have not i have i have no notes on the helicopter whatsoever what have i missed uh 56 seconds in the middle of the clip almost for exactly one and a half seconds we see a helicopter have you not made any notes on that Say that again? 56 seconds into the clip, for about yeah. one and a half seconds, we see a helicopter. I can't believe you've not made notes on this. Nope. Ugh, right. This is a cock up. Cock up. Bing! Bing! Number two. Uh, the Coast Guard helicopter rally, as seen in the film, is an MH-68A Stingray based on the Augusta Westland AW-109 USG, uh, least lightweight uh, AW-109 with full armaments. Now, this helicopter was used uh, in the mid-1990s until the lease with uh, Augusta Westland expired. All subsequent US CG helicopters are fully armed since the AW109 uh, has brief service. How did you not pick that up? I, I don't know, Ethan. I don't know I either. Have, I have no I idea what, myself. I have no idea what I just uh, read either. I think the helicopter, the Coast Guard helicopter you see for one and a half seconds is actually wrong. Some psychopath <laughs> decided to write into IMDb and uh, obviously mention that. If that made no sense to you listeners, it made no sense to me and I was actually reading it. I shouldn't have just read that cold. If you do actually ever want to follow any of the notes that we mentioned on this show, they are in the show notes under the uh, in the podcast information or they're on the YouTube channel as we watch the clip. So everything we discussed on the show is actually stored in text unlike the other minute shows. <laughs> <laughs> Carefully, Ethan, you're, they're your friends. Um, yes. Well, okay, so... my only issue is when I'm trying to find a guest perhaps sometimes that they have on, but I don't give the guest bio or any way of like, oh, I like that guest. I wonder what else they do. You have to kind of Google it and it's a bit of a pain in the ass. I actually link everything in mine. Just so. <laughs> um, yeah, so then we see... Actually, you know it's... what? That's a lie. Airport Min Jim, I apologise. You do the same that I do. You put all the information for the, uh, the, the show and the guest. So well done you. But we're the only two that do it, I think. Sorry. Carry on. I just killed the show, uh, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> so um, when they're all pulled to safety and they manage to get on top of the bridge, uh, they all start to get arrested. They realise uh, Pop says, "I don't have enough rounds to successfully, you know, look after this situation." They put their hands out. They're being arrested, and then one of the cops says to Arnie, "Down your knees! Down on your knees!" Does Arnie or Pops? Does he only um, respond to Sarah? Is it a similar case of it's like the Terminator in T2 where I he just own, does... I have what? my own pet Terminator thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. he only responds to what Sarah says. I'd assume so, but even then he kind of gets... gives He smack talks a little bit. If he thinks something is a bit ridiculous, he probably would go, that's ridiculous, sir. I can't know. We shouldn't do this. But because he's being instructed by somebody else, that's why he's <clears> not... Yeah. Well, I think it's also to convey that is this a movable object, whereas I think... The cops of 2016 would see that he resisted once and then just like empty like two clips into his head. <laughs> like... <laughs> Probably would have. It's, it's a black cop. All right, maybe not him. The the, the white racist cop who's clearly uh, this is exactly one minute into the clip, listeners. As they're being put on the ground, the white racist cop in the kind of like uh, the beige uh, police sheriff's outfit would <laughs> mush the black cop out of the way. He would never open fire on anyone and just shoot uh, Arnold. Even though he's a white uh, man. No. Oh no! Not Arnold. Um, yeah. You know so actually, that's... this lineup of actors. Uh, none of the four main actors in the film. Uh, this is. Uh... God, what is it? It's not trivia. What is it? Fact attack. Fact attack. None of the four main actors in the film were born in the United States. Amelia Clark is British, of course. Yars. We don't want to. 
Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is uh, Austrian American because he became an American citizen, I believe, sometime in the early 80s. He's Americanized, like Anthony Hopkins, strangely. Uh, and both Jason Clark, John Connor, and Joy Courtney's Carl Reese are Australian. They're Australian. And I can't. Also, I can't believe that from this particular two minutes, I have discovered that I am actually shorter than Amelia Clark. Are you actually? Yep, she's five foot three. Um, if we are to believe the measurements on, you know, when they do the police, like stand there, left, right, and they take your mug shot. That's it. The mug shot bit. It says that she's five three. I'm not five three. I'm five foot two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's something. You know what? I think a prince was 4'11", or exactly 5 feet, so you're taller than prince. Hooray! Swings and roundabouts. And you're, I think, one inch shorter than De Niro, which I literally cannot believe. That's insane. I think, no, I've heard De Niro's either 5'4", or 5'5", five five, and Pacino's 5'5", five five as well. Wow. Shocking, because they're such powerhouses on the screen. You just think, I know! How can, that, how can someone be almost around the same height as Ellie? and command anything i don't know well, very because strange. maybe height isn't absolutely everything ethan well no you get napoleon uh, syndrome don't you i think that's why a lot of overachievers are kind of like below uh, average height Cause i think the average height for a man is five nine or ten isn't it or five eight or five nine i have no idea uh but uh yeah i have another fact attack for you fact attack <laughs> I mean, everyone knows this. I still go back and forth on how I feel about this kind of movie fact. When Arnold obviously signed on to do this film, he was like, how do I return to this role credibly? Because I look like like a bag of elbows taped together. Uh, he went to see James Cameron and uh, asked for his blessing. And Cameron gave him his blessing for Terminator 3. He just said, take the freaking money and run, dude. And obviously, that, look how that turned out. Uh, for the fourth one, he obviously wanted to make a new credible trilogy, this being the first one. But obviously he's 67, I think, years old when he filmed this. And Cameron just said, well, I guess you could argue that the Terminator flesh ages like human flesh because it is, you know, a living thing. I've always had a bit of trouble with that. But uh, to explain his look of being obviously 30 years older than the 1984 Terminator and to obviously continue doing this role as this machine man, mm. uh, Cameron just said, well, look, tell them you can write this into the script, you age, just like regular people. That obviously gives you an out so you can kind of play this role as a 60-year-old man. And, uh, you know, this is what we have. I don't know, I just thought they would have, like, not aged. Why? It just, I don't know, it makes sense. and it, I don't have really a, a problem with him aging in this, and it's nothing that kind of sticks in my craw about it, but it just seems... Oh, I always thought the Terminator would have just had this, like eternal non-aging skin he would always have to be it makes sense that he uh, it ages but it, at the same time to me it kind of doesn't because it's not attached to any kind of systems that would be failing as it were yeah. you've got that battery that lasts 120 years and i think it lasts even more than that when you get to the t850s of terminator 3 if we're going to use it a continuous kind of franchise timeline and not imagine that the film ends with two which it really yeah. does in all our hearts <laughs> Uh, there's no kind of liver or kidneys or heart to fail. There's no kind of potential brain disease or cancers you would get. I'd imagine. Uh, I don't know. I just always thought the cells would just not have a kind of the shelf life at all. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. How do you feel about it? Before this film came along, what did you think the Terminators were? Do you think you would have aged? It's nothing I ever really thought about until... I personally didn't think they would. No. Just because... Because it's a machine. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't have an issue with this kind of idea, though, that he's uh, he can age. It's just uh, I always thought otherwise. It's the same with Alien. Do you think the alien in Alien or Aliens or Alien 3? I f forget Alien 3 because that answers the question for us. Do you ever think the aliens or the alien from those two films eat people? No. I never thought the aliens ate anything. I still no. think that. But in Alien they 3... Just, they, just, they just use their bodies as um, vessels for... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, very strange. Because in Alien 3, he's noshing off every single like uh, prisoner that he can get his hands on. <laughs> noshing off. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't... I don't. I never personally thought that Terminators aged themselves. But like you say, it's not something that really bothers me. No. It works. There's, the there's, a lot, there's a lot more that bothers me about these particular films. That is not one of I them. I would have liked to have seen where the film goes 
in the next one if it ever ever got made I don't think it will because I think Paramount and Skydance have taken it off their roster of films it was meant to start filming actually next year I think or the end of this year next year sorry 2017 for a 2019 release uh, but sadly it's not on the on the cars anymore it would have been weird to see Arnold as a T-1000 with like sword arms I'm like oh god they've run out of ideas <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, back to this particular two minutes. Um, why they've chosen bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? Oh my uh, god, that's what I wrote down. Why are they using a, a reference from the early 90s? From a show, it's from a show called Cops, basically. Do you remember Cops, Ellie? <laughs> yes, I remember Cops. Yeah, it's, it's obviously a reference to Cops, but it's just like... Why that? And why reggae? It's a 20... Well, because bad boys is, is that's the theme. I know, I know, Ethan. But what's reggae got to do with this particular film? So far, well, all nothing. The Ellie. References have been either punk rock or hair metal. How reggae fits in with this, I have no idea. Well, it doesn't. Well, it, it, it's just, fine. It's like can't do that fucking lame smile. I hate that. It's like they're always trying to make him into some kind of like joke. And it's just like. He's yeah. the only good thing about this film. Well, I mean, if you really want to lay the blame at the feet of someone, that's obviously James Cameron who came up with that idea of the Terminator director's cut or the extended edition, which Cameron isn't a fan of, or the uh, Skynet edition Terminator fans. He's very happy with the theatrical cut of that film, apparently. Even though you'd lose the CPU scene, Cameron came up with this kind of smiling Terminator idea. Yeah, I don't like it. Not one bit. You don't <laughs> like it even in the second one? In nope. the director's Oh, okay. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Yeah, no, it's just no, it's not for me. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's just cheesy, and they just—it's like they're making a joke out of Arnie. And in my opinion, you don't do that. Well, he's um, going along with it, isn't he? <laughs> you know. Um, say that again. I didn't hear. You. He's going along with it, isn't he? He's kind of like uh, an accomplice to perpetuating or doing that very thing. But in answer to your question, it's not really because it's reggae. It's because it's th they used it for the theme of cops and they're doing a pastiche of like, oh, look, their collars have been felt. They've been taken in. Oh, look at the mugshot with the Terminator. He doesn't know what's going on. He's trying to smile and go along with everything. Blah, blah, blah. Well, then why not do it the sound of the police? That would have been better. It would. And also it'd be a, a closer reference, but I think it's for those older viewers who go, oh, do you remember cops when they used to follow cops around and they'd go to like various trailer parks and arrest husbands beating their wives or someone yeah. had like kept a dog in a box for three weeks etc <laughs> bad boys uh so yeah that's the reason so yeah moving on through the clip arnie of course smiles what else you got for me eleanor um how on earth did mr strokey get cast as that questioning policeman um if you go to one minute 20 ellie I've, one i already seconds. know what you're gonna say and i've already got his imdb up <laughs> If you go to um, 1 minute 21 seconds eye. in this particular two minutes, one of his eyes is looking at her face, yep. the other eye is looking at her tits. I shit you not. Uh, 1 yes. minute 21 seconds, check it out. It absolutely <laughs> killed Ellie, me. Ellie, as I said, I, I already it, made like, notes on him and I've got yes, his please, IMDb. Yes, please keep talking, Ethan. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say I'm backing you up. I already made notes on him and I've got his IMDb. Before I talk about that, there's one thing I think we both may have missed. When Arnie's having his mug shot done, He's against the back wall of this thing. Now, he's either standing too far away from the wall or against it, whatever they want to make you feel. But on according to this movie... He's, he's six foot six. Six foot six almost, yeah. Ridiculous. Anyway, the actor with the lazy eye early, Otto Sanchez. He's a New York actor. He's in Bad Boys 2. He's in the TV show Oz. Uh, Double Whammy, a film with Dennis Lear and, of course, Terminator... Uh, what is it? Genesis. The uh, If you go on his IMDb page, look in the letters... Uh, someone's written in and rightly pointed out. I met him randomly the other night at a comedy, comedy show. The first thing I did check was for his lazy eye. To my dismay, both his eyes seemed normal. He was really cool. We talked about him dancing around and uh, doing Oz, the TV show. So there we go. Now, someone has done a counter thing to that and said, that's weird. I took acting class with him uh, at HB Studios in the late, uh, early 90s, sorry. Uh, and he had a very lazy eye back then, by the way. <laughs> he was a very nice guy, though. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, what are my other notes? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, so we, we see them being interrogated. And we see uh, Kyle is being interrogated by a guy who was at the who was at the hospital at the very beginning of the film. Um, and he's asking what these magnets are about. He slams the magnets down on the table, which the metal then table. in turn um, makes the chair slide over 
over to the desk um, and magnetised to the rings. However, it is actually a metal table, so surely it would have just magnetised to the table instantly anyway. Yes, you're absolutely right. I've rightly pointed out. Oh my god, so he is looking at it. So that's, so that's another cock up. Um, and the last boost. note that Ellie, I have you're on right. the I know I'm right. Why do you keep talking? Because I'm, I'm mesmerised by this. I am so sorry I steamrolled you then. I just tried to tell you you're absolutely it's right. It's fine. It's um, not fine. Uh, would you have employed uh, this guy as an actor? No, no I wouldn't have. Why? Because I, I can't tell where he's looking. And if I can't tell where he's looking, I don't trust him. Um... And then, so uh, Kyle's being questioned by this dude. He's got the magnets. Um, he's saying, oh, you know, oh, don't be a smart ass. Did your mother ever teach you that? And then he says, well, my mother was Irish, so she was, you know, she, you know, supported my ass -edness. And then we see this young boy who I'm guessing is the boy that's Skynet or Genesis, should I say. And then he says, no, nope, I don't recognize him. Never seen him before. And then the mother goes, but he does look familiar. And then the little boy goes, yeah, dad, he looks like you. Pants to an actor so looks nothing like is, him. So what I'm guessing is, is this little boy is actually Kyle and that's his parents. No, that boy is but Kyle. Then, He's the boy from the flashbacks. But then that backs. makes me think, how Kyle, is, is that the same boy that's um, Genesis? Because the, they're the only boys that we've actually seen in this particular... So I don't know whether that is or whether they're trying to make out that he is or they're trying to <clears throat> trick you into thinking that they're the same person. I don't know. Well, I think... Because we're so far away from it now, because it was at kind of at the start of the film, there was a flashback with this boy looking at the Genesis tablet. And then he has a flashback where he, I think we see him with Sarah. I think it's Kyle's dream, actually, that Joy Courtney's car remembers meeting Sarah as a kid. We're like, well, that hasn't happened in the film yet. It actually happens later in the film. But yes, he is the young Carl Reese. But why they didn't just cast or put Joy Courtney in a big porn tash and have him play the dad... Well, I guess you only see the side of this dude's face. But he looks nothing like Joy Courtney. It's like <laughs> <laughs> he's got the same bum. He's got the same bum chin. He looks more like Percy's dad from Blackadder, or I don't know. He's just a strip. <laughs> 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 he looks something like you know what he looks like. If Vince Vaughn was there, and he goes, "So Cud looks like you." You go, "Okay, I can kind of see him as Vince Vaughn's dad," <laughs> or Michael Rooker. But he looks nothing like. Uh, no, he doesn't particularly look like him. Although the look on uh, the mum's face, it's like one of horror. And it's just like, oh, is this an illegitimate love child with another woman? Yeah, she just starts fucking hitting him. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? I feel we're not milking this guy with a lazy eye enough. <laughs> well, I feel like I, I got out milked. And all my, all my chat about him is now gone. Well, as a casting director... This guy's obviously, what I'm saying is, he's obviously had a very successful career. He's been in loads of things looking at his IMDb. So he's obviously good at his job, blah, blah. But, like, wouldn't that visual tick put off most? Not that it should, and it obviously hasn't, but, like, would it not put people off? Maybe they showed it to promote equal opportunities <laughs> for then all people. Then why would you not have some kid in an iron lung in a wheelchair going, <laughs> so, <laughs> do you recognize any of these people who is this person um i don't know but forrest whitaker he gets a lot of work he's got a funny eye you know uh, speaking of forrest whitaker we are going to probably see him tomorrow night at the cinema <laughs> in rogue one listen oh we're going tomorrow i can't decide if he's the worst actor in the world or he's really good i cannot stand forrest whitaker thank you i don't i like i'm not he's terrible he plays the same part in every single film series he's always playing this kind of exasperated black man and who's he, got the worry of the world on his he shoulders he's always kind of he's always a bit out of breath and it's just like oh mate sort your face out he talks in that kind of weird staccato i i, I just can't think I, I i i i'm trying to find my next thought my, my name's forrest whitaker and, he and yet he's always put in these roles of like chief of police and I don't know. He's been in big, everything no, though. No, I'm not a big fan. Although he was at that Rogue One premiere that we worked at the other day. I know. I But uh, I don't know. Just like he's been in everything and, and tons of like legendary film productions. But again, I like, I don't know. I can't decide if he's really good or really shit. <laughs> Why would you possibly think he's really good? Just because he's been in loads of stuff. No, because I mean, I know this from actually. Sp I mean, I've spoken to a million people in positions of power in the industry, and they go, "It's literally not that." You, you, 
determination and luck and like talent mean is nothing like, is four things or five things down on the list I don't know but maintaining that kind of like output of work I don't know I just think uh, I still can't decide if he's really good or really shit I don't know what do you think listeners Forrest Whitaker is he good is he bad maybe you should write in and let us know when we do the next episode because in Rogue One he's got this quite a broad character this Wheezy McWeezerson called oh, Saul Guerrero and he talks like this a little bit well, like why don't, why don't we discuss Forrest Whitaker in tomorrow's episode after we've seen him in Rogue One we could do that I think, I, think I think you might like this movie, Ellie. I really hope I do, because if not, there's going to be hell to pay. I think the way you got completely <laughs> caught up in Captain America whoa, Civil whoa, War... Whoa, 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 whoa. There's no way that is going to happen. Even if it's an amazing film, it will always be tainted by the fact that it's called Star Wars. Hmm. Sorry, Ethan. I know how much you want me to like fall in love with these movies. Just... I am going to go and go and see it. I'm sure it's going to be good. As long as it's nothing like any of the other Star Wars films. I think films your hate ever. from Star Wars is the reason that you hold this torch to me and constantly ask me out on dates. And I always go, Ellie, I can't do it. I think we just need to be I'm friends. Ask you out on dates. This is coming from the man that's constantly like, Ellie, you never speak to me anymore. I get bored. I like talking to you. Ethan that's why is we do the a neediest podcast. person in the world, everybody. He needs constant attention. He's like a puppy or a baby. I didn't used to be. No, it's, I think you're confusing me wanting to do a podcast every day. You not wanting to do one and me calling. You're going no. to do a podcast. No, that's not what it is. Okay. Talk to me, Ellie. Talk to me. What they don't, what what you don't see behind closed doors, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> one day I will record one of the conversations. Separated and by hundreds as, of as miles. Ethan knows, right, that's enough. Cut a mic. <laughs> I'm also an admin on the two minute terminator. Cut the mic right. You get. I'm, any I'm, shit I'm get, right. I'm going on Facebook anyway, right now. I'm deleting you off the thing so you can't day, get me. Everyone, <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in with it us. It is Boxing Day, isn't it? It is Boxing Day. I forgot day. to mention that. It is the December 26, 2016. The day, of, the day of boxing, and I am about to go out and see some friends. Ethan, what are you going to do after this podcast? Probably keep me out down, state of trouble. Try and, watch, <laughs> try and watch a movie with Beryl, I don't know. I've actually just put at uh, anyone listening, if you want to join the group, uh, don't cross the memes. Either contact me and send me your name through the Terminator page, because it's quite a hidden group. Uh, I've posted some amazing uh, meme pictures on don't cross the memes. Uh, yeah, so there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd dry out and let you just Well, no, I, I've done an alien one, and I've done a James Stewart It's a Wonderful Life one. It's brilliant. You'd hey. like it. Oh, it's the one I sent you on uh, Viber, isn't it? Yeah. The only thing you, they've got wrong with that picture is Bruce home. Willis is from Die Hard 3, which isn't a Christmas movie. You should have got one from Die Hard Beauty. 1. <laughs> movie. Movie. Uh, but no, thank you for all your support. Uh, we hope you like the show. Uh, Ellie, I'm going to say this on air. I apologise for jumping on top of the lazy eye guy. I was so excited because we'd both like <laughs> noticed him. I don't know. I feel we've like we've lost a, a ton of comedy from you because of that. I was like, oh my god, the lazy eye guy. I thought of him too. Oh my god, I got I saved his his profile on IMDb. So I'm sorry, Ellie. It's fine. I'll save it all till the next episode. <laughs> okay. Well, you the, could, laugh, the laughter never ends. You've it's got you've got notes on reserve. this lazy eye guy still. No. They're all done. Ethan, let, let the lazy eye guy I'm go. about the lazy eye guy. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to 1 minute 21 seconds of the clip and you'll see what I mean. I saw what you uh, mean, though. Uh, I still can't believe he's in it. Hasta la vista. Oh, you. <laughs> Baby. Baby. So, uh, what are you doing later, Ellie? Ethan, what? stop recording. <laughs> 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 I'll just hang up. Don't hang up. I'm being needy now. <laughs> Ellie, so don't stop hang recording! Up. Right, I want to talk to you. Stop recording! <laughs> I wish I could quit you! <sighs> Cut you! What? Jeez.